and my phone just went off. Hope everybody's having a great Wednesday. We're going to do, uh-oh. Uh, let me check this one, too. To all make sorts sure of muted. new issues here. Right, okay. there, that one's muted already. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to go over the King's Indian, which I don't know anything about. So I'm looking forward to getting, um, I love all these introductions to all these different openings. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I'm going to get better. I had to think about openings. I was thinking about this today is um, even if you don't remember, you know, all of the correct moves or theory or whatever, it's still like by going over the openings, you're going over some ideas, just general chess concepts, which to me are helpful. So it's oh, not a waste of time. That's true. <laughs> hey, Map Danda. Hey, Map Danda. How's it going? Man, I hear it raining outside. Yeah, it was threatening all day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. The threat is stronger than the execution. Mm, definitely. <laughs> Man, is it thunder? Well, we're going to wait for people to get here for um, a moment, and then we can also play. Maybe we'll start out. You want to start out with some hand and brain? I could do that. Yeah, we'll do some hand and brain. This time you can drive. All right. I think I drove last time. That sounds right. <laughs> Apologies ahead of time for my bad suggestions. Hey, GM Benjamin Feingold. Pewter Furio is here too. Hey, Pewter Furio. Yay, Kangaroo. Gerard T. Gerard T. 97. The regulars. Nice. <laughs> hey, Georgia is number one. The, the, hey, Mark. Um, yeah, I need to refund you your class fees, Mark. Your family. You don't have to pay to do classes here <laughs> i keep forgetting to refund you but i will what are we number one at oh yeah sorry COVID, we're guessing? number one just guessing place that's mo where you're most likely to catch covid yes we're and number one this is based on one. two different models the the harvard modeling and georgia tech in both their models i actually looked at the tech one online yeah, we, we're number one. <laughs> so go Georgia. Um, so I don't know how they calculate all that, but that's not too good. No, it isn't. <laughs> Call the NRA. Yeah, if they shoot down some of these COVID patients, then it's less likely other people will get COVID. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um Let's see. Our own governor here did a live update presentation this afternoon with the state health officer and others. Not sure what was announced. Hmm, that's in Michigan he's talking about. Yeah, and yeah, Georgia beats out California and New York, and I don't know exactly. Crushed them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the National Revenue Agency, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Shifty McHacks. For the six bits, six little bits. Um, actually, isn't Florida also in a bad state? Yeah, I think so. I didn't see the full rankings. I just took note of the fact that Georgia's not doing so well. Um, yeah, yeah, Ben's right. It has to do with the percentages based on the testing and, I guess, current cases. Um, but let's see, we don't have any challenges. All right, why don't you guys challenge us for some hand and if brain? Somebody can challenge Five well, minute unrated. Yeah, five minute unrated. That's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. No three minute, no rated. <laughs> five minute unrated. Yeah, now if it's just me playing, I don't, you know, it's three, it can be anything, but hand and brain. Okay, yay. Oh, Furio's in here. Let's Peter get it going, Furio. huh? You ready? I'm ready. We're going. Man, the rain is loud. Pawn. Knight. Pawn. Um. Bishop. Right. 
Dang, it's raining pretty scary. heavy. scary. <laughs> Pawn. Getting a lot of challenges now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't unban. If anything, you're banned more. Bishop, what, who's, <laughs> what, what are they asking? He wants to be unbanned from my dad's channel. Who is it? Some guy. <laughs> Double Ben. Hey, Maxi. Hey, Scottish Demon Goat. Hey, Afron Pie. King. Let me look about this unbanning situation. But but is there not hope for redemption for any person? I believe that Mark uh, Fine Gold. Um, let me see what to do about that situation. I don't know. Queen. Now we're behind on time a little bit. That's I want to know who's asking to be unbanned. Um, night. It is so, it's raining. It's getting crazy out there with the rain. Uh, I'm sure they can hear it. Oh, it's Elon Tusk. That's who it is. That's the guy who wants to be unbanned. I'll review, you know, review you, Elon. <laughs> you have to touch, you have to ask me. Ben doesn't like to be bothered with any of that business. Elon Musk has been called the real life Tony Stark. <laughs> but mm. um, if I can remember, I can review your chat and make sure that, you know, you're un. Most people get unbanned <laughs> by me. All right, let's see here. What can we do? Pawn. Get it on back, lady. <clears throat> Spencer's hair is getting crazier by the day. That's true. Pawn. Is it crazy? It's Just not. normal. <laughs> normal crazy. <laughs> Oh, Brian with a hundred bits. Thank you, Brian the Rabbit Rabbit. Um, and let me see what people are saying. Bishop. Um, hey, Owen. Somehow I didn't um, see you before. Two bands, what else? <laughs> um... Pawn. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> well, I wasn't paying attention. At least we have more time. Mm hmm. A, a rarity with me. Bishop. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see that before. Uh, I don't want to test very well. As previously discussed. <laughs> okay, uh, Bishop. Uh, um, <clears throat> Bishop. Yeah, Maxi. I, um, I hope uh, Magnus's uh, back gets better. Um, it's crazy, like uh, Tony Miles type situation. situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was like having to get out and like get on the floor and stuff. Um, Rook. The dogs wanted to go out, but I asked Consuela. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty rainy. Russell Picker says, no dogs here. No dogs allowed. Um, the green hair was definitely crazier, says Boxar. That's true. Oh, it is taller. What's that noise? Just rain. It sounded like it was coming in. Uh, uh, let's see. Rook.
Yeah, I mean, probably won't get to raid. I have to, um, since I have two kids, I have to um, work around their schedule for streaming. Um, pawn. <clears throat> I kind of like our position. Mm -hmm. We hung a lot less pieces. True, but, you know... There's still time. <laughs> right. <laughs> so never fear. Uh, let's see what makes sense. I guess knight. Hold it in, Spencer. Then your tweet is wrong. Then wait, did you do some? Did you tweet the wrong time or something? I didn't see your tweet. Okay, let's blame Twitter. Says Kangaroo. <laughs> ben got hacked. As Murray says, positions looking good. You must be Igor. Igor. Map Danda says heart. Pretty <laughs> good, smiley. Uh, yeah, it was sad to see. I, you know, um, maybe night. <clears throat> yeah, his back was hurting. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, like really bad. He, uh, Let's see. Pawn. Good choice. I think um, he had done some kind of sports right before the round started. And I'm not real clear on what because I didn't. Um, I was only peripherally paying attention to the whole situation. But, um, uh, okay, pawn. Just don't want to worry about the bishop down there. Okay. Then, yeah, it was, he was grimacing. Rook. And, oh yeah, pawn. Forgot about the pawn. <laughs> Forgot about Drea. Um, let's see. Bishop, sorry. <laughs> he has one second left. It didn't matter what we played. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I still like to think of a good move. Good game. <laughs> Except you hung all your pieces. Good game, Putiferio. Or is it Putiferio? Or Putiferio. Like Putin. Or Putin. Right. Maybe it's, I might even say Putin's name right. Is it Putin or Putin? Putin. I don't know. I've heard both. I think both. it's Putin. Yeah, me too. All right, Puti Putiferio. <laughs> don't hang your pieces. You're doing like me sometimes. Uh, yeah, he was all twitchy and grimacy. What mouse do you use? <clears throat> yeah, you do have a fancy mouse. Me? I love my mouse. I gotta show off my mouse. Ooh la la. <laughs> Changes color and everything. It's, um, I think it's a razor. I usually just use that to shave. <laughs> but, uh, it's a gaming mouse. It's super sensitive. I just love my mouse. Um, and what? When I get home, like if I leave, if left my mouse at the club, sometimes I'll drive back up here just to get the mouse. I don't have to use some other crap mouse. <laughs> can we scroll down there so yeah, I can yeah. see more of the, you have to use the other one. I was trying to catch up. Go dog, says Elon Tusk. Go yeah, dog, go. yeah, Mark, back pain. You corrected something on Twitter and Discord. Get him, nice. says S. Murray. Felt bad for Magnus. Yeah, he did make a lot of faces. Oh, you messed up your stream time, Ben. This is almost a European-friendly stream, says Owen. I know that's why we have, get to have a kangaroo here. It's like a European friend of me. <laughs> it's almost European-friendly. Um, yeah, I was glad that, you know, 
Magnus one so that we get another day and it makes it more suspenseful. <laughs> Young Frankenstein was pretty good. You know, I've never seen it. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'd like to see it. But um, when I was um, a little girl on Saturdays, they always had the original Frankenstein movies on TV mm -hmm. and I watched them. Every Saturday, man, I loved those. Yeah. I don't know if I've even seen the, uh, you know, The originals? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're great. Mm -hmm. But you know a secret about Frankenstein? He's really Frankenstein's monster. Uh, what? It was, it's from Rick and Morty. Oh. <laughs> but it's true that, you know, you they call the monster Frankenstein, but the doctor was Frankenstein. Yeah. And so Frankenstein's really Frankenstein's monster. Mm -hmm. That's true. And that is true. All right, I'm going to get, get us caught up here. I like your taste in movies, Ben. Clearly, I should be unbanned. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, you probably didn't do anything, Elon. You know, when I'm done here, I'm going to review your message history, if I can remember, um, and most likely unban you. Yeah. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, I mean, the thing is about my stream and Ben's stream is, you know, we are not fans of Trump. No, we are not. <laughs> but I don't mind people that like Trump. But you just have to understand that, we, you know, you might get made fun of. I mean, not by me, but, you know, Ben. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make fun of people for liking Trump. You know, my mom liked Trump. She voted for Trump. But um, that's just the culture of these two streams. But I wouldn't want people to feel like you can't get on here. Just because you like Trump or, or some right. Republicans, you know, that's how I feel about it. But probably can't toot that horn too loudly, because <laughs> then people are gonna want to ban you. Hey, Mepex. Oh yeah, Mepex is in here too. You weren't nice. used to the time control, Putiferio? Razor Basilisk. Um, if only I had my glasses on. Can you see the model? Because there are a couple of different razors. Um, and I had a, another one. It doesn't say Basilisk I, on it. I had like the maybe the Mamba before. I think this is Basilisk. It was a price. It, it might be, but it doesn't say it. Um, I can tell you that it's it got like this symbol. It costs more money than yeah, you know, probably should have spent on a mouse. <laughs> it it changes like, color. <laughs> it was like over. It was like over a hundred dollars. But I love this mouse so much. My other one broke, and it was also a razor. I think that one was maybe a Mamba. Oh, you're looking for a new mouse. This is the greatest mouse ever. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mik Mikhail Tell. Um, let's see. Let me see here. <laughs> yeah, Ben does like to talk about um, time zones. Hey, Pietro, how are you? Gene Wilder's great. Man, I'm never going to get caught up here. Right. I didn't think we had this much chat. Those movie roles that are mostly shouted look exhausting to play, since typically you have to do at least a few takes. Which ones are shouted? Calculon I... never does more than one take. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> are you talking about Frankenstein? Do they shout? <laughs> <laughs> good. good. Yes. Not Remember when D was Frankenstein? Who? D. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, was that yes. when they did the... Um... Yeah, she's like, skin composed of rotten flesh. Roar! <laughs> Roar! <laughs> I can't do it as good as she did, but, you know, it's yeah, I grew, funny. Yeah, I grew up watching Frankenstein. I know all about Frankenstein. Sorry you missed the class this week. Hopefully I'll be able to join future ones. No problem, Mepex. Yeah, we did miss you, Mepex. Yeah, there'll be one next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Hey, Looks up, like Cable. Looks like Bazillus. Yeah, hey, up, Cable. You have a basic Logitech. The scroll button is failing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ivy Sore EG. Hey, Fraud with Kappa. Yay. Nice. All right. The usual I suspects. <laughs> Wilder shouts a lot. Okay. Hey, we nice. caught up. We did. <laughs> Can we discuss st string theory? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, well, hi, Karen and Spencer. What do you do besides streaming? It's hard to see. All right, because it's that neon green. L. Ikovacic. Oh. It's L. Oh. L. Kovacic. Those L's are, are fool me. 
El Kovacic. Well, I what? like to play video games. You mean, well, I mean, when the chess club's open, you know, I'm running the chess club. I'm still running That's the chess true. club. There's still a lot of work for it. That's true. And um, I play a lot of chess, and <laughs> we like to go to karaoke. I hang out with Ben and my kids, and I have to you know, do stuff for my kids. So, you know. Fraudwith asks, what video games am I playing? Well, I had just beaten Paper Mario. And I'm going to go back to Xenoblade, because I was about halfway done with that Xenoblade for the, you know, the definitive edition. But I'd already beaten that on the 3DS, so I'm not really in a huge rush to beat that game, because I already beat it, you know, on a different system. Oh, it's a little bit different. But uh, that's what I'm going to be playing next. But I've taken a little bit of a break from video games, honestly, <clears> like, you know, for a few days after I beat uh, Paper Mario. Pepper Mario. <laughs> oh, you do? You take, well, what are you doing all the time? Just like watching TV and stuff. Yeah. Sleeping. Mm hmm. That kind of stuff. Hmm. The I don't know. Xeno Gears? Does anybody play that Fall Guys game? I never played Xeno <clears throat> Gears or heard of it. Xeno Gears. I haven't heard of that either. Everybody seems really into um, the Fall Guys. Yeah. I don't think the graphics look very good. It doesn't seem like the kind of game I would like. I don't really like pastels. Do you know what I mean? I kind of like pastels. Oh, you do? <laughs> I don't uh, mind them. <laughs> I feel like it's like I'm in an Easter egg hunt. It is like that. I just I don't like the colors. And so the only reason I would ever even give that game a second look is because everybody's playing it. I don't really like the look of it. Mm -hmm. It is cute. I don't like those colors. Um, <laughs> you'd like to see me playing Fall Guys? You know, I would try it. But um, I wish the colors were different. Yeah, if different. it's called Fall Guys, it should be Autumn Colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it should be called Summer Guys if it's all pastels. Mm-hmm. Did you want to start looking at the King's Yeah, Indian? definitely. We're going to go ahead and get started here. And uh, just to answer one last question, Elon was asking when we might open the chess club. You know, we're just waiting on the COVID to be a little better in Georgia. So it's hard to say. Yeah. Can Spencer review game one from today's match? No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, only because we have, um, I'm, not, I'm not against it if we have time at the end, maybe, but it, we're going to go over King's Indian, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just not sure if we'll have enough time. But if we have time at the end, we could look at it. I didn't get to actually see any of the games today because I was busy. So, anyway. All right, so I thought that, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't go too much into theory, and I would just sort of explain like what the main lines are, um, or like what the options are for both sides, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of deal. So let's start with the most common, and we'll try to do the proper move order, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of move orders that you can get a King's Indian, you know. Yeah, I guess I should have put King's Indian defense, because there's a King's Indian attack, too. Yeah, most people think of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's asking. Indian. It's mm -hmm. going to be defense. <laughs> They're asking. <laughs> well, of okay, cable well, this one. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll start with the main line like this. Mm -hmm. Castles. Bishop e2. And e5. Castles, we'll look at obviously a lot of other options, but I'll sort of go like backwards and do it like that. And knight c6. d5. Knight e7. So this is like what Fisher would play in the 70s oh, and 60s, mostly 60s, <laughs> mm -hmm. and also 70s. Um, he liked to have this position with black. It's often called the Mar del, Mar del Plata variation, I believe. And so the idea is that you know white has a lot of space, a lot more than black. And this knight is also like really bad, right? Um, well, the important thing to understand about a King's Indian is, is going to be the structure in the center, right? It's sort of like a French structure, mm -hmm. but in a French it would be like this is there, and those are back, and then these are up, right? Yeah. That's what a French structure would be like. So it's a little bit, it's not really reverse, but it's sort of flipped French structure there. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do the same like we would do in a French. In a French you play C5, right? Yeah. On move three, usually. Well, like in an advanced French, for example. Right. And here, we're going to try to play f5 with black, much like how black would play c5 in a French. And white is going to go for this pawn break, much like how white plays f4, f5 in a French. Mm -hmm. In a King's Indian defense, 
in this variation, white's going to try to play c4, c5. And in this structure, that's the typical pawn breaks that both sides go for. It's a little bit easier for black to play f5, as you might imagine. All you have to do is move the knight and play f5. Easy. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I'm going to hang on one second. I'm just going to make the lamp back. Oh, back up that lamp. I just need some flags. No, okay. That's fair. <clears throat> hey, Farnsley. Hey, yeah. Farnsley. So those are like the main ideas. It's more difficult for white to get in C5, um, but it, it could be pretty powerful because, you know, this pawn will be kind of weak. It could be a backwards pawn if you trade, for example. And the, usually white's going to be attacking on the queen side in this variation. And in most King's Indian defenses, mm -hmm. it's going to be like that. And so here, white has three main moves. Uh, knight e1 is sort of like the most oldest main line, I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, b4 is the bayonet attack. This is what my dad would play this a lot. He likes to play the bayonet attack with white. And there's also knight d2, which is sort of significantly less common than the other two moves, but still should be considered a main line. And uh, I would say that if you want to play a King's Indian defense, um, if you're starting out, you know, you don't necessarily need to, like, learn a ton of opening theory, even though it's a really sharp opening. I would say that you definitely should look at some players who play the King's Indian defense and try to play the way that they play. And uh, you can even look at, like, older players, <coughs> like, throughout history. You know, like, like, Bronstein is, like, sort of the first dude to seriously play the King's Indian, like, all the time. And, you know, he played it even in the 50s which is kind of crazy. He was one of the first strong players to consistently play it, like I was saying. And Geller also, Efim Geller, is a good example. Um, also, uh, well, after that, obviously, Fisher, Kasparov, you know, through the 80s. Kasparov played a lot of openings, right? But he spent a lot, a lot of time on the King's Indian defense. He also played the Grunfeld a lot. And when he was younger, he played the, the Tarash, the Queen's Gambit declined. And he's played a Semislav, too, a lot. He's played a lot of, like, almost every opening, I would say, mm -hmm. um, has Kasparov. But he went through a phase where he played a lot of King's Indian defense and has a lot of really nice victories. Um, more modern players than that who play the King's Indian defense. Uh, you got Nakamura, obviously played it a lot, especially around, like, 2010 or so. And Rajabov as well. Rajabov would play it quite a lot. Um, Adhiban now, Adhiban, a, uh, an Indian grandmaster, mm -hmm. about 2,700, between 2,680, 2,700, something like that. Uh, he likes to play the King's Indian defense quite a lot. So those are guys you can look at if you want to play a King's Indian defense with black, and uh, you, you can try to play the way they do. And you could even look at, like, all of them to see, you know, who you <coughs> want to play like. You know, maybe you, you're a really aggressive player, so you'll play, like, Kasparov and Nakamura, you know. Is, is Adhiban... I may have him confused. Is he really young? Um, he's pretty young. Like yeah. A teenager? He's oh, he's probably in his 20s now. Oh, okay. Diff yeah. Different guy then. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. I think his first name is Bas Baskarin, maybe? Something okay. like that. But yeah, he's, he's a super GM from India. They got a, they got a lot of strong pl players there. Um, so yeah, anyways, those are, that's this is like the old main line, basically. Um, but obviously both sides have a lot of alternatives. Like, black, for example, doesn't have to play knight c6 and go into the Mardel Plata variation. You'll see a lot of people, they play with knight a6. You know, I, I've seen that called the modern variation. They might even play knight a6 before e5. Like, knight a6, then castles, then e5. And the idea of knight a6 is to try to get to c5. Oh, okay. Assuming that they will either push or you'll take, and then they'll, they'll get in there. Um, so, so this is a, a pretty common variation as well. Um, white either usually white either plays bishop e three or rook e one. There's one main line that I know here, where you go, you have to go knight g four. Hit that guy. And, it, and by the way, it makes a lot of sense for white not to play d five and instead play bishop e three to protect d four, in, in case you take. We'll play knight takes. And it's kind of nice in that pawn structure to have our bishop on e three. So black does best to harass the bishop. And then you move your queen. Yeah, then they'll take it, and then they'll kick your knight away. Yeah, h3. f6, although the explorer says that h6 is more common, but 
the main line that I know is, is f6, even though never played that. Bishop d2, and then knight h6 to go to f7. And then, yeah, c5 is actually a good move here. Uh, but this is already more theory than I wanted to look at. <laughs> it just seems like, <laughs> just with my simple simpleton eyes, there's a lot of, um, you know, knights moving around forwards and backwards and rerouting. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a, a lot of maneuvering. I mean, the bishop <laughs> also, bishop e3, bishop yeah, g5, bishop d2. Right. So both sides are sort of wasting some time mm -hmm. to make the other side waste time. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah, the knight on f7 is usually pretty good in a king's Indian defense. It's really solid there. It also guards the dark squares in case we play f5, which would weaken the dark squares. But with our knight on f7, it, it keeps it nice and safe. And our king is safe, and it's out of the way of the bishop. And, right. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that this line has kind of a good reputation for white, but maybe you can make it work. And maybe I'm that's why people it, play I'm just h6, saying. actually. Now, I've already forgotten, the. Well, I mean, even the path of the... the Knight. It was like this. This is a normal position. Um, okay, yeah. And then here. Okay, and then it went back. Yeah, and then they taxed the queen. Okay. Now, yeah, uh, after h3, both pawn moves are actually playable. It seems like people don't like to play that variation I just looked. That's sort of, I guess, an older main line, and people are preferring to play h6, which I don't know that move. I guess h6, You're knight back to f6. You're saying they don't like to play knight h6? Yeah, they don't like to oh. play like this that we just looked at here. Oh, okay. I guess c5 is strong. Yeah, I remember looking at this line years and years ago. Maybe five or so years ago. Six mm -hmm. years ago? So yeah, knight a6 is a pretty cool move. And uh, you definitely have to know some stuff there. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, if I were you uh, and you want to play knight a6, I would find some people who have played knight a6. Uh, a good example is Kurnasov, R.I.P. The Kurnasov played with knight a6 sometimes. Mm -hmm. He liked to play King's Indian. So yeah, knight c6, knight a6. Um, also, we can go with, like, for example, knight b d7. This is sort of uh, the older variation. A lot of times people play this, they'll play uh, knight b d7 first. That's usually the way to do it. And then e5. This avoids the exchange variation. White can't take and then trade queens which that is an option white has if you play e5 first. You know, instead of castling, white could take, which we will look at that as well. Mm -hmm. And trade queens. That's what my dad likes to do as well. He, he's, he's had tons of games there. So usually mm -hmm. when people play like the old King's Indian with knight bd7 and e5, uh, they'll play knight bd7 first to avoid the exchange variation since they're going there anyway. Okay. They figure they might as well avoid that variation. And that's one reason that people do play this with black is to avoid the exchange variation. As in the game Nakamura, or Fine Gold Nakamura, where uh, <laughs> Nakamura did play Knight BD7 because my dad plays the exchange variation, and Nakamura wanted to avoid it because he wants to win. You know, and an exchange variation is a little boring, as most exchange variations are. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, this is, uh, y you have to know definitely less theory here than like the more mainline, like with Knight C6, the Mar del Plata variation. Mm -hmm. um, usually White's playing, for example, Bishop E3, Rook E1, Bishop F1, Rook B1 trying to play like b4 at a timely moment uh, black can play with c6 and e takes d some a5 knight c5 rook e8 um, and they can play all these moves in different move orders and a lot of times white will answer c6 with d5 because then the d6 pawns is is weak and white can threaten to play d takes c followed by queen takes d6 in that case um but yeah obviously d5 weak and c5 so you got to consider that when you're when you're playing this with white but typically, I think that uh, this isn't a, the best practical weapon that black can choose because it's not very complicated, and black should just be a little bit worse. You know, black has a little less space, and it's not like the Mar del Plata variation where it's like black's checkmating white. Um, you know, like how Fisher would do. Fisher would do this, and then he'd he'd go he'd move his knight, and then checkmate you, Rawr. and then you'd attack him on the queen side, but then he'd checkmate you, so he won. You know, that's what he was going for. Mm -hmm. Computer really likes white in most King's Indians, like like this, for example. Computer said like plus one. But it, it's not really that clear. Computer doesn't know that it's about to get checkmated. It either sees checkmate or it doesn't. If it doesn't see checkmate, it doesn't care. You know, so that's, that's not really... Uh, you, you, if you're analyzing with a computer, you have to really dig deeply into the position and try to figure it out and be a good chess player. You can't just say, like, oh, the computer doesn't like this, I won't play it. 
Right. You know, then it's not going to happen. <laughs> You're not going to be able to play this opening then. Owen says, is Karen going to play this with white or black? I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably neither, really. Um, I'm just kind of getting introduced to some different openings. I do need to dig deeper into the ones that I play. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's interesting just to learn about some other openings. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> oh, hey, Jen. How's it going? Strong fro, Spencer. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was a famous game that Kramnik won with black against Jan Gustafsson. I believe mm -hmm. it was Jan. And Kramnik played E takes D. Knight takes rook E8. And then C6. And this was like really popular right after Kramnik beat Jan. I think it was Jan, pretty sure. Um, because of the fact that Kramnik won that game with black against not only, I mean, Jan's, okay, Jan's not as strong as Kramnik, but he's, he's very strong. Obviously, mm -hmm. he's no joke. And he's very solid with white, and he's a great theoretician, too. He knows a ton of theory. So uh, the fact that Kramnik won with black was pretty inspiring for this variation. And, uh, I, you know, I've played this with black myself, and I, I never really had good results. I remember I lost to Leonid Gershoy in this, uh, in this variation. He played king h1. That's the best move. The idea for black here is that you're sort of, like, threatening to play d5. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you ever play bishop e3, your your bishop's loose there, so I can play d5 without without losing anything. And uh, so, so that's one point. A lot of times black also plays knight h5 followed by f5 and gets some dynamic counterplay that way. Um, or, like, knight, the typical knight d7 to c5 is also a way to go with a5 to stop b4. That's also a way that black can play. Uh, I remember against Gershoy I played uh, knight h5 first, I think. Maybe knight d7 is better. Then he kicked me with g4. Then I went back. Then he played bishop f4, which was good. Then I played h5 and knight h7. But you can see there are still games here. This was like the line I prepared. Mm -hmm. Queen d2. But I think it's not great for... Uh, I don't think it's not great for black. Black should be worse here. Obviously, the knight on h7 is terrible is really the, the main issue. I mean, I could try to get it back in the game, but that's going to waste some time. Yeah. And I have a lot less space <laughs> as well. Um, but I do have some dynamic compensation. Like, if I get in d5, that'll be really good. If I can ever do that, mm -hmm. that'll be, and then his position will just fall apart. You know, but obviously I can't do that right now. <laughs> just take it twice and win a pawn. So that, that's kind of the, the name of the game here. But uh, I think that, you know, you could probably play this. Um, you could be inspired by the Kramnik win in this variation, but you're going to have to uh, do some more modern analysis because that game is probably about 10 years old by now. Yeah. Is nice. h4 instead of queen d2? go? Well, queen d2 is better because it connects the rooks, and you don't want to <laughs> have to push all your pawns all the time. Gonna, really. Gonna all those black pieces staying at home, yeah. <laughs> yeah, black's waiting for the structure to be more established before uh, before developing the pieces. Yeah, I would say that, you know, the King's Indian defense isn't really a recommended opening for beginners at all. Well, from Black's perspective. I think you should play more classical openings if you're a, if you're a beginner. You know, like a Queen's Gambit Declined or a Slav. Or even a Queen's Gambit Accepted. You know, those would be good examples. Alright, let's see. So that should be about it for this. Alright, so yeah, here we'll go back half a move. We were looking at what Black's choices were after castles. Um, but White has options, too. We might as well talk about the exchange variation since we already mentioned it, right? Yeah. One of my dad's favorites here. So this is like has a reputation for being pretty boring because you get the queens off the board and you release tension in the center early. Mm -hmm. So nobody has to worry, like, is black going to take or is white going to take or is white going to push? You know, nobody has to worry about that because it's not going to happen. Right. Um, and usually white plays this because white doesn't want to play a lot of opening theory. That's a good reason to do it. And also... If you like queenless middle games or more boring positions in general, then this is uh, this is the way to go. You can play either bishop g5 or knight d5. Um, I remember Christoph Selicki, he would play knight d5 all the time on his YouTube channel. He has a ton of examples here of the exchange variation with knight d5. But bishop g5 is more common. Um, the idea is to threaten knight d5. And there's uh, everybody knows about this. You can't really take the pawn because you get counterattacked here like mm. this. So it's not going to be great for white. So that's why white doesn't do that and goes here. And I think the best move is rookie eight here. 
there are other moves like c6 i even saw a game where i think it was komsky played knight a6 mm -hmm. which almost i think it might lose by force <laughs> there are some games in the database though maybe it's okay i don't know but i, I don't know I, and also rook f 8s a move but i think rookie eight's the best move yeah like this and then they'll take and play c6 and bishop c4 yeah and then after the capture every knight move is a move all of these knight moves are playable so yeah this is pretty boring like i was saying uh, it's not the most exciting, but black shouldn't objectively be doing too badly. I mean, you can see in these lines that black is even, if you look in the opening explorer here, that black's even uh, has a, a positive record. So it, it's not really objectively a problem. It's just if you really want to win with black and your opponent knows what they're doing with white, it's going to be kind of tough for you to win. But mm -hmm. you can still go for it, I think. You can still yeah. go for the win here. Oh, sorry. Yes, Scottish Demon, got, that's what um, Spencer was saying. Yeah, Ben likes to play this. Definitely. Trade those queens off. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's the exchange, a little brief explanation of the exchange variation for you. There's a couple of other options that white has. I mean, castles, like we said, that's the classical line that, that we just looked at, and mm -hmm. taking is the exchange variation. But we can also play the Gligorich variation. That's a, a favorite of Yuri Shulman. He would al almost always play the Gligorich variation. I remember when he was my teammate for the US Chess League, Mm -hmm. uh, he, he played this and beat uh, an FM, a young FM. I forgot his name. I think his, either his first or last name is Tyler. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was he was like 2400. Um, and yeah, the, Bishop E3 is an interesting move. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really think it gives uh, an, an objective advantage for white. I remember there was a game, Gelfand, Rajabov, where it was like that game was from about 2009, 2010, around there, uh, where Rajabov found a nice way to equalize. And I think that, you know, the, the opening shouldn't be providing a, a serious advantage for white. Mm -hmm. But, it, oh, sorry, you were going to say oh, something? Oh, so I was just wondering. So Shulman, you said Shul Shulman likes to play the gl 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 Gligorich. Yeah, yeah, you already same to play it. Is he the same one that... Um, doesn't he play the French too? Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, he likes to play the French as well. Okay. And yeah, this it's an interesting variation. It it has some quirks to it, and if you study this with white, you'll know it better than somebody you are rating who plays the king's Indian with black. Mm -hmm. Because with black, they have to know like a bunch of different variations. And the Gligorich is not really high on their list of variations that they have to uh, that they have to know. Yeah. So if it, it's good for that practical reason. Mm -hmm. Um, and definitely, you know, if you're a 2700 Grandmaster, you know almost everything that's serious, like a Gligorich variation, very deeply. So it, it's tough to, like, get an advantage against, for example, Rajabov with black. Yeah. And so against Rajabov, you should play, like, a more main line, I guess, even though you could say Gligorich variation is the main line. But uh, Owen, any, Owen's so. asking, not Shulman, Shulman. Yeah, Shulman. S-C-H-U-L-M-A-N? S-H-U-L-M-A-N. Oh, S H U L. M -A -N. Yeah, he was the 2008 U.S. champion, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2008. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, the kangaroos got it. So here, the the idea of the uh, the Gligorich variation is that uh, knight c6 is not a good move. That that was like the move that you play after castles to get in the Mardel Plata variation, like how Fisher would do, mm -hmm. or Kasparov. But here, it doesn't make a lot of sense because. You know, your knight's bad, I've got more space. It's the same stuff that it would be in a Mar del Plata, but the difference is that I haven't castled, so you're not going to go here and checkmate me. Right. Right, yeah. because I haven't castled. Mm -hmm. So I'll just play in the center, like knight d2, and play c5, and knight c4 early, and I won't castle, and then black will be worse. So this is something that black should definitely avoid. And again, with bishop e3, you can punish that move with knight g4, just like we saw with that knight a6 variation we looked at earlier. Mm hmm here, but here you actually play f6 as a response instead of queen e8. Bishop, uh, Yuri would sometimes play bishop c1, but bishop h4 is more common. He played that too. And I always thought knight c6 was the best move. I remember in the game that the US Chess League game where he beat the Tyler, I forgot <laughs> first name or last name, Tyler, that Tyler played g5, uh, which weakens the white squares a lot, but th that is also a main move. Like those are the two moves. And so if you have this with black, you know, I, I'd probably recommend knight c6, but I haven't looked at this in years. Maybe an engine would say that g5 is okay. Um, but th the problem with playing g5 in the long term is that if you ever play f5 
I'll take it. Mm -hmm. And then you can't play G takes anymore. Oh, yeah. So you'll lose control of the white squares. You know, mm -hmm. if I ever play D5, you want to play F5. But then when I take it, I'll get control of E4 because you can't take back with the pawn, which is the usual way that you should do that in a King's Indian defense. You usually want to take back with the pawn so you can control the white squares. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's how Yuri mm -hmm. beat the guy, too. You probably find that game online, um, you know, because they have all the U.S. Chess League games on, on their old website. Mm. Hey, trying to learn. Yeah, so it's just a little briefing of the Gligorich variation. Um, also, we should talk definitely talk about the Petrosian variation. All right, D5. Petrosian, my favorite world champion. He would just close it down immediately. And when Petrosian was playing this, he sort of admitted that he didn't think it was the best way to go, like for an advantage for, for white. But he didn't want to, like, let... He didn't want to castle and, like, get checkmated. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm not really done. I'm going to close the center so I can keep my king in the center. And then I'll do stuff like knight d2, and, and, and well, I'll get my bishop out first, usually that's what he did. Then knight d2, and then I'll try to play b4 and c5 and knight c4 and try to attack in the center and on the queen side quickly. Um, which is interesting. You know, the problem with the Petrosian variation is it's committal. White already committed to d5, so c5's weak. So that's why almost always it's a5, and then we're going to try to get our knight into c5 as quickly as possible. Bishop g5. Well, h6 first. Yeah, actually, I had this variation with black against... Uh, it was in the Chicago Open. I played a, a guy... It was a master, but he's on his floor. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, boy, floored master. <laughs> That's where I get my rating points, right? And he just played great and crushed me. <laughs> he played a ton of theory. We played, like, 25 moves of theory. And then he outplayed me after that, and all his moves were best. Mm -hmm. And I made, like, minor mistakes, and he outplayed me and, and, and won. And I was like, dang it. I hate when, when they play, like, how they used to play. Yeah. <laughs> Play like an old man. Come on. <laughs> Play bad and miss stuff. What Give are you me doing? Your points. All right. But I, anyways, he crushed me. Mm -hmm. I forgot what the guy's name was because because he beat me, so I didn't remember. <laughs> but yeah, it was like this, knight d two, and then I played queen e eight. Yeah. And so there's a lot of maneuvering around here. That's what Petrosian liked to do anyway. He, you know, knight c five for black. A lot of times it's knight h seven and and f five. White tries to play. White will often try to play b a three and b f and b four, um, but if the knight's on c five, you don't want to play a three because then they'll play a four, and then you can't play b four because of on passant. Oh yeah. So a lot of times they'll play b three then a three then rook b one then b four, so it's like they slow roll you a bit because if you play b three first then a four can be met with b four and there's no on passant. Mm hmm. So that often happens in a Petrosian variation. And I think that, you know, black should equalize here, but um, somehow I didn't with the, however I played. Uh, but yeah, with best play, you should be able to equalize here with black. Doesn't mean that white shouldn't play it. If you like to, if you like closed positions like Petrosian, you don't really feel like, you know, getting checkmated or, or, or it's, it's, it's a race in like the main line where black's attacking the king and checkmating you and you're attacking on the queen side, just going to win on the queen side. And so if you don't really want to do that, then you could play the Petrosian variation and get more space and play it in a more maneuvering way. Mm -hmm. But just know that with best play, I'm sure that black equalizes. Yeah. Still Karen thinks what Ben would like to eat. Hmm? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Hard to know. <laughs> Hard to know, really. I'm not thinking about what Ben would like to eat. You know, that's <laughs> that maybe means something else. So let's look at some other uh, options that White has other than Knight F3, Bishop E2. White's got a lot of ways to go here. Um, F3, the same-ish variation, right? Never play F3, mm -hmm. you might think. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the same-ish variation, it, it's pretty interesting. It weakens the dark squares a lot. That's the downside. But White is trying to play in like a flexible way where he's supporting the center, and he doesn't want to block his knight. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't, uh, well, he, he doesn't want his knight to block the pawn, I mean. He is blocking the knight, right, rather. He's blocking. But he doesn't want the knight to block the pawn. He wants to use the pawn, and he'll develop the knight later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that is one of the downsides, is that this knight doesn't usually find a great home. And that's why you have to be careful about playing a move like knight d7 with black, because that allows knight h3. Knight h3, f2, that's a great square for the knight. So you don't want to play knight d7 with black and let him do that. You want to okay. answer knight h3 by taking it, and then they have terrible pawns. Right, yeah. 
So that's something to keep in mind if you ever have black against the same ish variation. Castles. Now white has only three moves here. Bishop e3, bishop g5, and knight e2. Um, bishop e3 is like the main line, basically. The most common one. But I guess they're all main lines, really. And here, black has several ways to play. Um, black can play like with e5, or with c5. Or black can play knight c6, a6, rook b8, bishop d7, and b5. Which is known as the uh, Pano setup, Oscar Pano. Not to be confused with the Panov variation mm -hmm. of the Karakhan, which we also talked about when we talked about the Karakhan. Th that's different. So those are the three ways that black can play against this variation. And black can also do that against the other moves as well some, sometimes, you know, depending on the situation. Um, if you play with e5, usually, you know, white can push. That's totally true. A lot of times they won't. They'll just go like this and they'll set up and castle queenside. Where usually you want to break with uh, you want to break with b5 then, like c6 followed by a6 and b5. Maybe knight d7 first and play a6 b5. That's a pretty good way to play for black. You want to play dynamically and aggressively. Well, that's what you normally do in a king's Indian anyway. And uh, so, so that's a lot of times how people play with black with, if they want to play with e5. I wouldn't recommend to play with knight c6 here. And then d5, knight, e7, like an Amar del Plata variation, the first mm -hmm. thing we looked at. I wouldn't really recommend to do that because, again, white didn't castle, and white's not going to castle kingside if you do that. So you're just going to have a bad knight and less space, and your kingside attack isn't going to be rolling in that case. Right. Yeah. Oh, are you going to bed? Nighty night. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Owen. Dream about chess. Sweet dreams. Um, let's see. Kupo says you're looking more and more 70s. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I would love the music of that time. Now, so at bishop e3, one idea of bishop e3 is to dissuade c5. You know, now black can't play c5 because we'll take it for free. Except you can. You can do it. And white can take, doesn't have to. White could also play knight g2. Um, but this is a pawn sacrifice. Like this. Mm -hmm. And then here, knight c6 to defend the pawn. And black actually has pretty good compensation here. I don't really know what the theoretical evaluation of this is nowadays. Mm -hmm. But I've always thought, I've, I've always been told at least, that this is pretty okay for black. Um, black is a lead in development, and white's dark squares are really weak because mm -hmm. he played all these pawn squ pawn moves on white squares, and this bishop is really strong, and also the rook is pretty good, um, so black has a lot of activity for the pawn, but obviously if you play this with black, you'd have to know a pretty good amount of theory because if your opponent knows more than you do, then they're going to be up a pawn and knowledgeable. They'll probably have a good position if you misstep. So it's definitely something that you'd have to learn. I mean, any time you gambit a pawn, you should know it pretty well, I think. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, they don't have to take. Like, most people actually play knight e2, and they could even try to play with d5, and it's sort of like a, uh, a Benoni. Like, you can get a Benoni structure that way after e6, for example. Um, yeah, and I already mentioned that they could play, like, knight c6 and play with... Uh, a6, rook b8, and b5, for example, like this. Yeah. I mean, there are a ton of moves that white can play here. Knight c1 is the most common, which is pretty funny. Just to guard b5 with the bishop, actually. But white can also play like this, or rook c1. I, f I feel like there are some Karpov Kasparov games here. And yeah, black wants to play this and play bishop d7 and b5 and attack the c pawn and make a break this way. You don't want to sit around and do nothing, you want to make a break. So either break with e5, c5, or b5. Mm -hmm. You already played d6. You probably won't play d5. <laughs> right. Wouldn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Now, bishop g5, it's, it's a little different. You can't play with e5 here. And in a lot of variations in the king's Indian defense where white plays bishop g5, you can't answer e5 for, tactical, for the same tactical sequence. Mm -hmm. This is a mistake. We'll take it, trade him, and then this. And you're in trouble here. This is hanging and that's hanging. It's a fork. And it's pinned. 
And you can't defend them both. It loses material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you can't handle bishop g5 the exact same way. You could still play c5, and you can still play with knight c6, a6, like this. You can still play both those ways, but you just shouldn't play e5. It loses by force, actually. Yeah. And knight e2, it's kind of similar, actually. I would say don't play e5 here, because then they will they'll play bishop g5, potentially, right? So you might prefer to play c5. Yeah, c5 again. And we could still play bishop e3. That could transpose if they play bishop e3 first. Um, or they could play with d5 and get it like a Benoni sort of structure. Um, which I had this position against. Uh, I played knight bd7, which is an unusual move. I, knight c6 is more common. I had this position against John Bartholomew. Actually, oh, yeah. yeah, we ended up drawing. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I went here. I played ace. I, I was already out of theory here, for the record. I didn't know too much. I guess only move eight. <laughs> I played a6, which is the most common move. And then he took, which is like hardly even a move. Well, it is some games here. Yeah. And then I took with the knight, but d takes is better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this shouldn't be a big problem. I played knight takes, and I was maybe a little worse, but I still ended up drawing. Mm-hmm. Although, I shouldn't have agreed to a draw. It was equal when we agreed to a draw, but he had less than five minutes, and I had, like, 20. I should have played on more, but I was too chicken, I guess. It happens. Yeah. You could still play, like, the same way also with, like, this. Mm -hmm. Should be pretty similar. Yeah. All right, so that was just a, a briefing about the same-ish. What else can we do? Uh, how about the Averbach variation? That's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Well, there are lots of different variations. Oh, yeah. You're getting a compliment here. So good, NM Spencer. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> bishop e2. So the Averbach variation is another one where we play bishop g5. <clears throat> Do you remember why e5 is wrong? Um... Let's see. Well, almost MG weirdo, but you got to prepare that a little bit. Um, did it have something to do with the knight coming into fork of fork town on c7? Yes, that's right. But what do you have to do before um, knight d5? Let's see what happens. And the queens are traded. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. E5, you're saying, and then mm -hmm. D takes. Yep. D takes, queen takes, yes. rook takes. Then, um, C, uh, knight to B5. Ooh, almost. <laughs> that doesn't fork. That attacks C7, but you need the knight to attack C7 and F6. So it's knight D5. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard for me to visualize that many. Oh, yeah, because the rook can't take. That's right. Looks off. I was at it. Yeah, this is a <laughs> common way that there are a lot of times you play bishop g5 and it's stopping e5, and this is one of the mm -hmm. one of the points of the Averbach variation. Oh yeah, blocks it on off. So e5 is is a blunder here. Uh, there are a lot of ways to play um, with this position, but usually you want to play with c5 because you don't mind a Benoni structure with bishop g5 too much. I would say. Yeah, there's a sharp variation where White sacrifices pawn. I mean, black does. Here, bishop f4, which is not the only move. And then e6. This hangs the pawn. Because d6 is hanging. Oh, yeah. And then here, yeah, they never take this pawn. Sort of forgot why. I, it seems like it might be knight takes e4. Not sure, actually. But they'll, they'll just develop. Um, but black, again, has compensation for a pawn. Because this is, like, looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. And th these bishops are also really good. And you'll get knight c6, which is a good square. Knight c6 to d4 is no joke either. Um, so yeah, I think that the theoretical evaluation is that this is okay for black. But I'm, again, it's been a few years since I looked at this. So So when the, bis when the bishop goes to g5, mm -hmm. there's no intent to ever take the knight? No. I wouldn't Not usually. Because then look at how so, good that bishop yeah. would be. 
So the only reason is just to get them to play h6? I don't understand. Well, the there are a couple of reasons to play bishop g5. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of them is the tactical reasons that, that we looked at to yeah. stop e5. But yeah, we don't mind if they play h6. You know, we can back it up. And we lost a tempo, but the tempo that black played h6 is harmful. Black mm. would rather not have played h6. Yeah. That okay. doesn't help. It doesn't even get luffed. Like, it does get luffed, but you're not going to get back rank mated when you fiend cut out your king's bishop. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. So it, it doesn't really help black to do that. It, it just weakens the king side, if anything. So we don't mind to provoke that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Averbach variation is definitely really interesting. I mean, there are even lines where white can play with f4, you know, like f4, white, like knight a6, f4. I don't really know if that's good for white, but it's interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looks like a couple of questions here. What um, about e5, f4? What the heck? MG, weirdo, and kangaroo. And, hey, I, I'm in new Oh, one. well, yeah, kangaroo is just answering trade on e5 and then d8. Uh, that was right. Yeah, he's got that right. And uh, what about e5, f4? I mean, you should basically mm -hmm. never be playing f4, you know, in, in that kind of structure because they'll play e takes f and their bishop will be really good. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't really know what position he mentioned it because there's, like, a little delay, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Chest Rx. So yeah, that's a little bit about the Opperbach variation. Uh, what else? Oh, we could talk about the four pawns attack, right? Yeah. yeah the most ambitious way for white to play. <laughs> unusual looking. Yeah. Well, you know, you gotta attack, attack the center, right? Yeah. Can't blame white for trying, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely, should, you know, maybe develop some pieces. <laughs> Usually a good idea. Making a lot of pawn moves. Castles, knight f3. So there are two main ways that black handles this. Either you play c5 and it, it's like a Benoni again, or you can play knight a6 with e5. Like knight a6, bishop d3, e5. They usually take and play d5. And then you get the c5 square for your knight. White still has a lot of space, but weak dark squares. And white also traded and pushed so that your bishop's blocked here mm -hmm. to sort of uh, safen up the dark squares a bit. So, uh, yeah, this is... Um, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't really know the evaluation of this position, but I always thought that black would do better to play with c5, although I'm sort of a Benoni player, so I like to play c5 in a King's mm -hmm. Indian, because then it, it can transpose to a Benoni. Um, yeah, d5's the move, and then e6. Bishop e2, in this case. Takes, takes. And now black has a lot of moves. Like, I would play bishop g4 here. I remember a line that uh, Bill Calton showed me, uh, and he's a, an FM from uh, Michigan, and he, it was like a camp that we that my dad was running. He played rook, rookie eight. I think that Black was Epiphany, that was her name, I believe. Uh, she played rookie eight. I think it was against Epiphany. This is an interesting line. E Epiphany. That's yeah. strange that you would even say that name because today I was looking on Lee Chess at their streamer list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because um, I was curious how they advertised their streamers. Mm -hmm. And there was somebody named Epiphany. It might have been her. It has to be the same one. Yeah, definitely, right? She's a really cute young gal. How old would she be now? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was, like, very strong when she was young. Yeah. So, she, yeah, she, she, would um, be, she wouldn't be older than, like, 20, yeah, 25, she's, maybe. Yeah, she's on there... Um, on the she, I think she must be like six or seven years younger than me. Okay. She's probably early this 20s. This is funny. There can be that many epiphany. Did you have an epiphany funny. when you saw her name? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just noticed because her name was unusual. Maybe it was her, yeah. <laughs> it's got to be her. It. It's got to be her. Anyway, she took against Bill. Epiphany. Takes mm -hmm. knight g4. And then he played e6, which is a rare move. Mm -hmm. Most people play bishop g5. But he had read in a book, it was called Kill the Kid here, and then d6. Kill the Kid. What? King's Indian defense is kill. Oh, oh. Kill the kid. <laughs> so this is what his uh, book told him to do. It's a pawn sacrifice from white. Oh, thanks for the raid, Olympiad. Yay, thank you, Olympiad. Nice. It's a pawn sacrifice for white, but he made the pawn go to e6, so then the bishop and rook are blocked, which is kind of inconvenient for black. Mm -hmm. Like, now rookie, it looks silly. And we have a passed pawn on d6, which is pretty good. Yeah. Hang on one second. Um, what is this guy's name? This I can't even see it. Let me read it on this one. Ras FC. Oh yeah, Ras FC. We were Spencer was telling 
<laughs> Wait, what happened? Spencer was telling a story, hey Squire, about an AK jet, about um, a student at a chess camp that I guess, Ben, you were both were teaching? Just my dad. Oh. They were like stronger than me, the people. Oh, you were at the? Yeah, I was just attending it. Oh, attending it. Anyway, there was a girl at the camp named Epiphany, and just by chance today, I was looking at the streamer list on Lee Chess, and there was a young woman there named Epiphany mm -hmm. listed as a streamer. So just by coincidence, I saw that person who I've never even heard of right. <laughs> today. And so that's all we were talking about. Anyway, continue. So yeah, here White's got other options, like White can play the Sarawan variation. Which I don't know how often Sarawan played this, but I would say probably not very often. Yeah. <laughs> bishop d3. That's normally not the best square for the bishop in this structure. He just wants to play knight e2. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a same-ish variation, because you can get a similar setup, but he hasn't committed to f3 yet. Mm -hmm. Castle is knight g2. Yeah, I don't really know much about this line. Um, I thought that e5 was the most common move. And then maybe d5, d5 makes sense, yes. Yeah, then probably a5, right? Although mm -hmm. most people actually play c5 here. Pretty weird. Yeah, I don't know much about this variation, honestly. It's not the most potent from White's perspective. It's sort of a way to get out of theory, I would say. But you could probably know something. It says here knight c6. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is it. Knight c6, then e5. Yeah, I've seen this. And then knight d4. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen this before. Takes. Yeah, this makes sense. Knight b5. Yeah, rook e8 hitting this. Yeah, this does look vaguely familiar. Knight g4 to protect the pawn. Although white is scoring pretty well here. Oh yeah, then here. Because if you move your knight, you lose your pawn. Potentially. Mm -hmm. So you counterattack. But yeah, white is scoring well here in the database, so maybe you have to know a line other than this. This is the main line, I guess, of the Sarawan variation, which is a sideline <laughs> in, in and of itself. But uh, you could probably either learn that if it equalizes or find some other way to play w with black if it doesn't. Because it seems like Black should definitely be able to equalize here. <laughs> no doubt about it. But yeah, like I said, I don't really know how often Yasser played that. Maybe mm -hmm. he did play it quite a bit. And there's also H3. This is the Makagana variation. Uh, I played this myself, actually. This is what I would study the most, really. Mm -hmm. GM Hikaru plays this? Oh, he plays uh, the, the Sarawan, probably? Oh. I wasn't sure which... Yeah. Well, that's sort of like a same-ish. <laughs> Castles. Yeah, and then here, there are three moves that people play. Knight f3 is like the main move. You can actually do it by different move order. You can play knight f3 first, then h3. Bishop g5 is an interesting move. Uh, I used to play bishop e3 myself. And one of the games that we'll look at on Friday will be a game where I played bishop e3. And I knew a lot of theory when I played it, but now I don't know so much, <laughs> as it turns out. Uh, knight f3, yeah, like I said, that's the main move. And there are some funny lines here. Like, usually black or white closes it down early um, because h3 is kind of a slow move, and it's going to be a lot of maneuvering. So he figures, let's just close it down so I never have to worry about them taking. Also, you, you might not want to take, or might not want to let them take, like let's say you go here. Because in this kind of structure, you want to play f3 to support your pawn, but you don't want to play f3 and h3. You, that's ugly, right? That, that weaken the white squares yeah. quite a lot, or the dark squares, rather, mm -hmm. quite a lot. So white doesn't really want to do that. That's why white would generally close it down. And yeah, there are lines where like white plays like this, maneuvers around here, that kind of stuff. Um, there's some line knight h5, g3 to protect and not allow knight f4. You know, you don't want the, the knight to go to f4. You don't want to take it because then if they take back, their bishop is amazing on the dark squares. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't really want to do that with white. You want to avoid that at all costs. Oh, we got a subscriber. I don't know. Thank you, Neil Gabriel. Nice. Better than Peter. <laughs> and yeah bishop g5 it's the same problem right can't play e5 can you maybe you can I don't know I don't think so let's do the same thing looks like we got him mm -hmm. same thing as always yeah right? this looks pretty tough so yeah that's another another bishop g5 variation but you could still play with c5 usually playing with c5 is a safe answer against any bishop g5 like the same-ish with bishop g5 or the Averbach 
or this the Makaganov with bishop g5. Usually c5 is a solid, safe way to go about that, especially because, you know, they weaken b2, and c5 tries to open up the diagonal there. Mm -hmm. So, and even, like, maybe some queen b6, which queen b6 is a way to play in uh, the Averbach variation, too. So, yeah, c5 is, is usually a good answer for that. Yeah, and bishop e3, that's what I would play. And, uh, yeah, I've, I had a, lo a, a lot of nice games here. Um, mostly, like, blitz and, and rapid and stuff, but I did have one really good, uh, really good slow game. Let's see if I can remember just the opening. It was like this. It was against Ina Agrest. And she played, uh, she knew a lot of theory, too. She played here. And I played bishop d3, which is not the most common. You can see knight f3 is more common. Mm -hmm. But I played bishop d3. That was my prep. And then she still knew what to do. She played like... She played here at some point. Yeah, she played here. And... Sorry, a little pause here. I guess I played g3, right? No, I didn't play that. How did the game go? I'll have to... Well, we'll, we'll know on Friday. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot this, because mm -hmm. I had so much prep here maybe before. Maybe G4. <laughs> right, maybe. Maybe G4. <laughs> no, I remember she played this, and then she played Queen E8, because she wanted to play F5, mm -hmm. but her knight would be hanging if I took, and she took with the pawn. Then her knight would be hanging. So she played Queen E8, and then I went from Bishop D3 back to E2. That was my, uh, that was my prep to stop that again. Can't play F5 then. And then she just went back. Although maybe she, you know, later in the game she let me take, actually. It was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, that was an interesting game, which we'll definitely look at. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody's saying you're going a little too fast. Um, I'm, you know, I'm able to follow, and I'm, like, the slow, I mean, super <laughs> slow. Well, but... I mean, we got a lot to look at, so, yeah, you know, we're just <laughs> I don't want to be here all day. <laughs> Plus, uh, you'll find this video on, on YouTube, and you'll, you could be able to re-watch re it in that it. case. Yeah, I know you can even you're watch it at like fifty percent speed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Al Cohen. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying because I have a very slow brain, and so, but I guess I have the advantage is I can ask him to repeat it. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> More true. easily than you guys can, but um, yeah, you can rewatch it on YouTube, which is what I plan to do, because I really can't remember things until I go through it more slowly, kind of on my own. But so, anyway, so we there are a couple of other variations we can look at, like a um, fianchetto variation. Usually it's knight f3 first, and then g3. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, white's trying to obviously get developed. Like, well, a lot of people who play like the Catalan with white will play this way with white as well. And black's got a lot of options. I mean, black can even like a lot of people they play a Grunfeld. So they could play a Grunfeld, but let's keep it in King's Indian territory. Okay. And play like a King's Indian here. And again, we have this option to play like a, uh, a Pano. Knight c6, a6, rook b8, bishop d7, and c and b5. It's a really aggressive way to go. And a lot of people who play like the Pano variation against the same ish, they'll play the Pano variation here as well. Because mm -hmm. why not? I can play it all the time. Um, you can also try to play like with e5, um, you know, like knight bd7. And e5. I actually had this against, um, against, uh, he's from Atlanta. It was Daniel Gurevich. Okay. Yeah, I played Dan little Daniel Gurevich. Well, he was little when I played him. <laughs> Still higher rated than me. <laughs> Which and tournament did you play him in? It was in St. Louis. <clears throat> it was probably the Mid America Open, mm -hmm. I believe. That seems correct. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, I mean, in this variation, white will get more space, but black often tries to get counterplay with, like, some tactical tricks. Um, you know, like with queen b6, which he didn't play that. He played, like, takes or something, he, or maybe, like, queen a5. It seemed like he didn't really have prep against this at the time, at least. I'm mm -hmm. sure he does now. He's a lot stronger now. He was even stronger than me back then, but, you know. Yeah, I remember there was a, a game where... It was here, and then c5 was the move. Very complicated stuff, you know. Very complicated stuff at this mm -hmm. point to take, and then try to take here. Yeah, knight e8. This is a line that if you want to play this with black, this is going to be the main line that you should look at. 
for sure. Not the only way to play. Like I said, you could play the Pano way. You can also play with C5 still. You know, you could play with C5 and, and try to get it like a Benoni, kind of. So they don't have to play D5 right away. If they do, then it could be a direct transposition into a G3 Benoni, which this is. Mm -hmm. This is a G3 Benoni. Check out my Benoni video on our YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, but a lot of people don't do that because they don't want to play G3 Benoni. But some people will. You know, they're like, I play G3 against Benoni anyway. So I play G3 against the King's Indian Defense, and if they play C5, I'll do it. But they don't have to. They can go here. And if you ever take, then it's sort of like a, an English now by transposition, like C4, C5. And then later in the game, white played knight f3, d4, and then takes, takes. Mm -hmm. So if you play this way with black against the English, then you could totally do this too. It's also kind of like an accelerated dragon. It's like every opening. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. But um, yeah, just some options for black. Black's got a lot of ways to go. Black doesn't even have to play CD there. They could play knight c6 as well. That definitely felt, looks like a dragon there for me. Yeah, definitely. I used to play that. Let's see, so what else can we <clears throat> discuss? I can't really think of anything else, any other main line. I mean, there's lines where, like, white plays bishop g5, um, like, knight f3, bishop g5. It's not really, a, like, a, a main line that you would be really interested in studying so quickly, at least. Mm -hmm. Um, also, you could play like knight f3, bishop f4. It's sort of like a London, mm -hmm. you know, e3. So there, those are some like anti King's Indian variations. But yeah, as far as like the main lines go, that's that's about it. Okay, it's cool. quite a lot, though, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot, but you know, I myself will review the the Twitch or the YouTube video. And I'm Spencer, mm -hmm. he, and it's, he's so cool, as he is so cool. That's true. And you left off the most important part. Something about Karen, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Karen cool also. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't understand because it was a typo. Trans so that's, that's why I let it that's why I let it slide. Um, well, so what are people doing? Are you just watching the, the lesson here? Yeah, the speed theory. <laughs> <laughs> pew, 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 pew. <laughs> that's how you got to do it. That's the only way I know how to do it. You got to get it in there. So, yeah, definitely. If most people are probably like me, unless you already know the openings, you have to go back over it mm -hmm. again. And that's when you really start to commit it to memory. That's true. And then maybe even try to play those openings. <laughs> um, so much like you. Hmm. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it's it's so macho like you. <laughs> <laughs> I am pretty macho. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching um, Gotham Chess's stream today, and he was doing some weight, lifting some weights. And that he, is macho. Then he showed his bicep. <laughs> I feel like I don't know him at all, but I still feel like I could beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, possibly. I don't. I don't know. There, I can't remember the saying. Crazy beats. <laughs> Elon Tuss says <laughs> you could take. Well, now, now you have to unban him after that. <laughs> <laughs> crazy beats something. What is it? Crazy beats strength every time or something like that. So you have to go crazy. I am crazier probably. <laughs> I am Rosen good. Yes, he is good. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You know, Gotham Chess looks like he could... Uh, that was a pretty big bicep. He showed, he showed. What? You're doubting me? <laughs> well, it's just, I was surprised he had a bicep. I'm like, what? Because he looks kind of thin on camera. I have tattoos. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> True. I am Godakomsky. Time for a round of chess boxing. Yeah. Um, you know, Gotham chess, though, he... Um, now he's grown on me a little bit. He's... I haven't watched his stream for even one second, <laughs> but I'm sure it's all right. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he's a New Yorker, so you have Oof. to. Have it's to, too bad. I have to understand that New Yorkers have a certain, you know, forget about it, you know, <laughs> like certain attitude. Well, you don't have to tell me. I mean, I lived in, uh, I lived in New York. <laughs> but, um,. Over 30 years of chess at top level. Oh, Gata? 
Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. God is pretty serious. Yeah. He never changes the title of his stream. It always has. <laughs> he doesn't know about that stuff. Come on. <laughs> well, he changed it at one point to put FFL, um, you know, when he said, you know, the, you know. Right, right. Uh, Famous legend. Yeah. He uh, changed it, but then he never changed it again. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> but um, he ha he's a, has an unusual personality. I only ever got on his stream like once. But um, it was it was a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> but I'm sure a very nice man. Um, anyway, so what should we do here at 7.30? Maybe you should play some people now. I can play some people if you guys yeah. want. And then Spencer can analyze the game, game or games. Scottish Demon Scottish Ghost. Scottish Demon Sweden. Goat you know, understands the format of the stream. <laughs> yes, he already yes. has a challenge there. Yes. Ready to beat me down, per usual. Can I lose without flagging? <laughs> no, come on. You can win. I think I beat him once when there was a mouse slip. Nice. <laughs> Maybe Karen is Catalyst. <laughs> Do I ever play the Evans Gambit? I don't think I've ever played the Evans Gambit. Um... Yeah. I don't know much about it. No? No, I didn't, in an E4 opening. Yeah. And then there's some business on the side and the with the bishop getting trapped or some hoo-ha. Yeah. I don't know it. I just have seen it. I don't play E4, so. Uh, his name was Evans. He was a captain. That's true. <laughs> Not named after Larry Evans, but a different Evans. Mm -hmm. Captain Evans. Then there's some related opening, or maybe I'm mixing openings like Noah's Ark or something. Well, that's sort of like a sequence that traps the bishop. Oh. So it seems like you are conflating them, because mm -hmm. in, in, in the uh, Evans Gambit, you don't really lose your bishop. Yeah. But your bishop does get attacked. Oh, okay. So nice to see that you are happy. Which one? Both of us? Because one of us? I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> We're both pretty happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, happy summer time. All right, let's go, Neb. You demon. <laughs> it took a second to count which number <laughs> was B4. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's move four, yeah. Get it going, Neb. Where are oh, you? Oh, no. He waited so long, and then look what happened. Scottish demon goat. <laughs> I saw him on here a while ago. Oh, there you go. <laughs> nice. Just in the nick of time. <laughs> Much stronger player, Karen being the underdog. But you're winning on time. Mm -hmm. A little bit of exchange, huh? Mm-hmm. Get it going. Go, Karen, says MG Weirdo. Mm -hmm. Now, no, it always makes me think of the Radiohead song. MG Weirdo. <laughs> yeah. That is a good song. Mm hmm. Kangaroo says, still theory. <laughs> Always. Scot Scottish Demon go typed in, go Karen in the chat here. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> still theory. Someone before was asking about King's Indian defense moves for black against one e4. That would be the Pierce. That's correct. Yeah, the the difference between the King's Indian defense and the Pierce is that white doesn't play c2, c4. So it's a tempo faster for white, but there's you don't use your c-pawn. So it's a little bit riskier for black because you could get attacked more easily with that extra tempo. But you don't have as much of a disadvantage in space in appearance as you would in a King's Indian defense. Mm. This has to be bad. <laughs> well, you're up a piece, so it doesn't have to be bad. Unless you meant it has to be bad for white. In which case, I would agree. <laughs> um, oh, shit. <laughs> that one was a little risky. <laughs> I will admit that. Uh, oh, darn. What is in the best, the least bad? Mm. 
GM Feingold did a great video series on the Philidor with 1d6, which I play now. Darn, I didn't even I've have played a good that name. as well. Have a good I'd night. be sore. I've played that a few times. I had a nice win in the Chicago you Open hate me. with that. But it, um. Which legal move is it going to be? Well, I mean, I didn't want to go over here because he's going to fork me. Even though but that is the late. only legal move. Um, I can't go there. I know. But, um, darn. Dang. That was like an even worse than usual beat down Scottish <laughs> Demon Go. Good game, though. <laughs> Tough but fair. <laughs> oh, yeah, Karen's so good. What was the right move to counter that bishop? Oh, uh, that was terrible. Well, probably you were winning before King H7. But maybe not. I didn't feel like it. Well, you're bad, but you're up a piece, you know. You can you can endure a little bit of difficulty for an extra piece. Yeah, but the minute that the knight started coming in, I was going to get forked. Let's go back and look. All right, yeah. I, I don't know. You might not have been winning, but it well, seemed to me like you were. Um. But okay, your defense wasn't perfect. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So when we talked about the exchange French, I said you should go here. I couldn't remember. That's more active. All right. You always, I, I tell you not to do that. <laughs> I'm always like, stop playing C6. You're like, no, C6. I love C6. <laughs> the only time I would play C6 in an exchange French is if they play knight C3. Because then C6 stops their knight from moving. Okay. That's the only time I would ever play C6. Otherwise, it's not going to happen for me. It's real lazy of me to do that. You, the reason I do that is because it seems like one time... Yeah, it was. They had their knight on c3, and then they got their bishop on g5, and then they took my knight, and then I lost my pawn. Okay, but then wait for him I to know. do all that. I know. <laughs> I just said it was lazy. Because <laughs> now you have to put your bishop on a more passive square on e7. All right. You know, that's not I'm as never going to do it again. All right, I'll believe it when I see it. Then, I don't know, a6, I wouldn't do that. You should maneuver around like he's doing. Put your knight there, bishop d6 or f8, get your bishop out, that okay. kind of stuff. So if I move, maneuver around mm -hmm. to g6 with the knight, he's not going to take my knight, is he? With Probably this? not, because then you have two bishops of Vatels. Okay. But yeah, this is like pretty symmetrical, except I wish that your bishop was here. But, okay. you, but because you played c6 early, you had to go here because he was going to check you if you played bishop d6. Mm-hmm. There's that guy. See, I told you. Knit, yeah. Knit. Is knit Romney. Knit picking, knit. <laughs> so you played C5. So now you've got a bad pawn structure, right? Yeah. And then B5. I don't really like that. If you want to get out your bishop, you should go like that. That's how you would play in an isolated queen pawn. You get out your bishop this way. Okay. Usually. I was just worried about the isolated pawns. I thought if I get my bishop on b7, it would. Yeah. Well, okay, it's that passive situation. here. Yeah, I know. And you got but a bad already, structure and your passive. Already messed, bad. Well, I already messed it up. A little. <laughs> a little. Yeah, so here he took, which seems bad to me. No, no, before we go further, I want to see the engine evaluation. All right, right I, bet, now. I bet it'll just say Black's winning. That's my bet. Yeah, okay. almost winning. One point two. Well, better. Black is better. Yeah, I mean it's like very close to winning. It um, probably is winning if you let it calculate more and more. Okay, so where did I go wrong? So this was the right move by him. Always play bishop f eight. That had to be right. Okay. Queen d two is the best move. And then, like I said, yeah, king h seven is just a huge blunder because you walked right in. Yeah, well, I saw it after I moved. What should mm -hmm. I have done there? Knight f e four hitting the queen and blocking the bishop. Oh, yeah. And also, you're pretty well-placed for that move. You've got everybody defending it. Like, everybody on your team is controlling e4. And it comes Darn. with the tempo. Now, he could still take this with check, though, because check. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. But now, because you moved your knight, you have the option to get your queen out of here, like one of these two moves, to try to trade queens. Oh, okay. Which would clearly benefit you. I'm just letting it think for a little bit mm -hmm. to tell me which one's better. <laughs> I guess this one's better. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this should win. I mean, it's a pretty high evaluation. Mm -hmm. But you'll have technical difficulties because he does have two pawns for it. And your pawn structure's kind of bad. Yeah, it was okay, Le Lequescence. In fact, I should take that bishop. It's yeah, just, I didn't. I didn't handle it 
It would be ridiculous if he took and you didn't take back. I That's know. unacceptable. I took it. Yeah, hey, Jay Wolfen. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I knew I was going to have to take that or it's get yelled at. It's just tough to defend. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm glad you did take it. <laughs> no, I, w I would take it anyway. And then, yeah, now it's over. Um, but basically, the only, like, really bad move you played was King H7. Yeah. You know, so you you would have uh, been in it if, if not for that one move. But that's mm -hmm. how it goes in chess sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It scared me, too. That's why I think I lost Lequescent. Since I got all rattled. Yeah, interference. Yeah, the knight f knight f e four yeah. was interfering with and the bishop. And that's just and that's actually the kind of move that I usually see, but then I guess they could go, you know, f three, right? Well, the queen's attacks. They can't do that right now. Oh, that's But maybe true. later they can try that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyways, you get your queen in helping the defense. Yeah. By then, I've got other thing pieces Cooking, yeah. pieces to help, so it wouldn't matter. Hmm. But yeah, he put the pressure on you, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Good speak. game. Hey, um, Audentis Fortuna Juvat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen that, that name before. I thought it said students at first, but then I was like, wait, that's an A, and there's no T after it, so it's probably not. <laughs> is that, um, I guess those are, what language is Good that? Good night, Ross FC. Good night, Ross S. FC, we hope to see you again. Unless you were saying goodnight to somebody in the chat, which is possible. Oh, <laughs> oh it's Latin. It's Latin. Yeah, like O Fortuna. O Fortuna. You what know is... that song, right? Uh, wait, what song is it? It's, it's O Fortuna. I don't know. I don't know any of the lyrics because it's all Latin. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean, O Dentis? It sounds like teeth or something, maybe. Den dental. All right. Fortuna. Fortune favors Fortune. the bold. Oh. Oh, like audacity, right? Audentus. Unless, oh, oh, unless yeah. Juvat is. <laughs> 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 That'd be funny. Yeah, Juvat. I don't know. It's from Carl Orff. Fortune favors the bold. Well, I like that. Nice. And then Mark came with some Luventus, Sultorum, Magister. <laughs> Uh, oh, Juvat's the verb. Okay. Nice. Well, should I play another one? Yeah, you got a couple more people who want. All right, I'm gonna play another one. Um, I'll just go in order. Oh, here we go. <laughs> another French, huh? Mm-hmm. Nice. Let's see if they want to exchange it up. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got a French flag in the chat. <laughs> oh, nice. You're playing my recommendation here. Yeah, I, I told like you it. to play it. Okay. I don't know the, the order, though. But I'm just going to do the, my best and hope it works out. Well, I'd already be out of theory here because I don't know Bishop E3. Uh -huh. So you're doing as well as I, you know as much as I do. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, Ivysaur likes it. Said it was a cool move. <laughs> That's true. I've played this in over the board, but not this exact, mm -hmm. you know, variation. But now let me see what I want to do here. Got a lot of options. Mm -hmm. But already a successful opening, huh? Got out all your pieces. Mm -hmm, maybe. Ready to castle? <laughs> and traded off white square bishops? Certainly have equalized. <clears throat> oh, his, it, what Mark said in the chat was from Tombstone. If only oh, my dad okay. was here to corroborate that. Yeah, I don't know where Ben is. All right, is, shouldn't he be on here? Donating some Giving us, money some bits and, and heckling the crowd. He was here earlier. Um... Let's see what I want to do. I don't really feel like I have a good plan going on. Um, Pawn 
playing great this game. Yeah. Like a grandmaster. No. Who cares about that? Mm. If it's free, it's for me. <laughs> now he's feeling like a fool. Look at him. He's like, ah, I'm a fool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure SM Rosny is not feeling foolish. Well, then he sh doesn't know enough. <laughs> After my... Should be. Previous gameplay. No, that's mm. making him feel more foolish. Seeing how badly he got beat and now he's losing. Mm -hmm. You know? Maybe not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hopefully not. Now let's see what do I want to do. It's over there. They're discussing in the chat how to spell Latin words. How impractical mm. is that? <laughs> Can't think of anything less important. Than what? Than spelling Latin words. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's something less important. I just can't think of it. Well. Love this maneuver, 98. How are you playing so good this game? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a moment. I'm sure I'll blunder. Right. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm waiting for. And I'm sure what your opponent's waiting for, too. Um... You learned Latin for seven years? Yikes. <clears throat> what is it good for? What, what, what is it good for? I sang a song in choir in Latin, at least one. I had a solo in Ave Maria. I told you the story, the, guy, the kid, uh, he, um, he came up to me like in the next year, mm -hmm. and he's like, last year when you sang that solo in Ave Maria, I thought you were so cool. But now I know you're just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I told him never meet your heroes, kid. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, hard to argue with anything you said, though. I did a great job on the solo, and I was an asshole. <laughs> Both things can be true. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Well... So many words derived from Latin. Well, that's true. I mean, there are a lot of languages derived from Latin. Why didn't I predict that? It's not a big deal. <laughs> it's annoying us. Um, let me see. Learning Spanish, okay. Italian, German because of the declinations. Hmm. All right. I've never been good with languages. I took Spanish for like, I mean, all of high school and it, at least one year in middle school. I still never learned like anything. But I do, I do know that, you know, most Spanish words, if they most nouns if they end in o mm -hmm. they're masculine you know uh, except for mono moto and photo <laughs> those are three that are feminine that that you would that end in end in o hmm. so that's one thing i learned from my five years of spanish mono moto photo latin helps you translate medieval chants oh that's cool <laughs> That's cool and practical. Well, maybe not. <laughs> you can read Newton stuff. I'm just waiting for those uh, your emote in the chat. When are people going to start spamming it, huh? Oh yeah, I'm a bit. Oh, behind. level twenty sword actually just said it after I. After um, I did, it was like the same time because I know that he didn't uh, didn't hear me because of the delay. Let's see. Get back down here. Okay. 
kangaroo, how can we keep challenging her? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> well, maybe he didn't like the other time control. That he but he's did. done it like four times. Yeah. I don't think he changed his mind that often. Mm. Sometimes Latin is simple. Well, I'll take your word on that. Oh, I get it. Kangaroo is on mobile. And he keeps disconnecting from chess.com so he could type in the chat. Oh, I see. And then Sunita, every time he reconnects, it rechallenges. That's weird that it does that. Mm hmm. Tough game so far. Yeah, I'm so low on time. That is the toughest problem <laughs> mm -hmm. in Black's position, is the clock. But maybe you'll still win. Mm-hmm. Go, Karen. We got play faster in the chat. Mm hmm They know it. She knows it. Catching up. Ronald Reagan's favorite condiment. Catch up. Don't forget to throw in some pre-moves if you can. Mm -hmm. Like yesterday. Well. Oh. Okay, but now you have to pre-move so you can win. Ah, almost. Then Darn. it got you there. Why wouldn't it let me pre-move? I don't oh. know what that was about. <laughs> it freaked out a second. It, it, was, it couldn't let... believe you were pre-moving. <laughs> <laughs> I did try to pre-move. It wouldn't let me. <laughs> you got to pre-move a little earlier, though. <laughs> you did do a good job at the end, but it was already a little yeah. bit too late. Good game. As Kappa's, why, Karen, why? <laughs> I think he means knight takes queen instead of queen takes um, queen. I don't know. I'm just not very good. What do you want from me, Kappa? What do you want from me? <laughs> I did try to, um, I did try to, um, pre-move. SM Rosny says, sorry for the bad game. Well, you did great. Want to analyze it? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't really say he did great, but <laughs> he did win it. For his level, I mean. Yeah, I we're guess. We're not masters. You can come on. That's get, true. It's a break here. And he hung all his pawns. Come on. <laughs> you don't have to be a master to not hang all your center pawns. <laughs> Bishop e3, true. I don't know that move, but it might be okay. This seems like it's not right. I mean, then he wasted another tempo to take. And anyways, what's the point? Is he going to take your knight? Like, if you didn't do this, what's the point of that move? I don't know. Your move's good, though. I'm just saying I don't like his move. I mean, I think he was just trying to pin the knight and maybe... You know, gang up on it somehow. I didn't see a way to gang up. He can't even, you know, can't even do <laughs> nothing though. This was all great. You're playing great. Mm -hmm. Although, couldn't you could take that pawn, right? Oh yeah. In fact, this pawn is hanging. Sat there the whole the game. day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the pawn just sat there forever. Then my queen finally took it. I saw it at some point, but then it was. I mean, he could play pawn takes, which wouldn't lose his center pawns. Yeah. Instead, he hung all his center pawns. Now you're winning, frankly. Obviously. That was a great move. Love that move. Threatened mate and you saw it. Really good. Kicked it. Yeah, I mean, maybe you should go here. 
but or this. Mm -hmm. Those would be, I guess, the two moves I'd consider most. But this was fine. Then here you could take the pawn. Oh, yeah, I didn't see it. I never see the lateral moves very well. A lot of times there's an open C file, and you often just ignore it. Mm -hmm. I noticed. you got to, like, try to challenge it. Or at least maybe this rook. Mm -hmm. But instead you're, like, moving your queen around and not taking free pawns and such. But I guess that's why you played here, so you could move your rook and not lose your A pawn. Right. That was definitely one. Yeah, yeah. and I should definitely be taking that. That is didn't see it. And then you did challenge it. That's good. That's good. So now you're still a pawn up, so you should still be winning, I guess. That was a great move. Now you're talking. Now you took that. Fine. Yeah, but here's where, like, I'd already be almost pre-moving at this point. Like, pretty close to pre-moving. Mm -hmm. Or, like, getting ready to pre-move. Well, I didn't... The reason I didn't pre-move in that position was because I thought if they went queen d8... Then I was going to get mated. Well, yeah, I mean, in this type of position, they could do anything. Like, they could do a weird move like this, hanging their queen and attacking mm -hmm. a rook. And if you pre-move, then, you, you know, it's not good. But I would do, like, for example, I'd, like, be like this, hovering over. Or a lot of times, if I expect them to check, I'll do like this. And then if they check me, I'll let go and move my king. You know? And then if they don't check me, I'll just put it here. You see what I mean? No. So I'll put my rook here, because mm -hmm. I want to play check, let's say, right. for example. And I did want to play that. But I know that they're going to, like, maybe check me, right? Right, yeah. So I might have to play king h7. So I pick up my rook and I put it here. If they check me, I let go of my rook and move my king quickly. Right? Yeah, I do that, but occasionally somehow um, it turns into a mouse slip. It, All right, that could happen. you got to you have to remember, control. It happened one time when we were playing, I'm like, what? My, when I put my queen back like where the bishop goes in the London. Mm -hmm. It was that same type thing where I was doing like a pretend drag right? to save time and then I somehow, anyway. Or you can also, because you can do you can do tap and tap, or maybe you don't have that, you don't have click click set up, so you can't click and then click. I don't move that way. All right, yeah, I don't do that either. But you could theoretically like tap your rook and then hover your mouse over your king. Mm -hmm. Then if they check you, you move your king. If they don't, you just click B1. Mm -hmm. But you don't do that. That's fine. You don't have to do that, obviously. This was all great. Yeah, they didn't hang mate. They saw that and went here. Mm -hmm. Then here, yeah, you took the knight. But you did take too long to see it. I know. I almost didn't see it. Well, that's because I was running out of time at that point. Now, now here you have to pre-move every move. Okay. There's no reason not to pre-move like this and then pre-move like this or something random. You don't want to pre-move taking the pawn because they can defend it. Right? Yeah. So here you have to, when you're up a queen for nothing, you have to pre-move every move. Okay. There's, like, because what I are you going to do? Like, just don't hang your queen, right? Right, okay. Like, go, like, play queen here, queen here, queen here. Like, who cares? I see. Yeah, you know? th that was dumb. <laughs> I'm just not good at pre-moving. That was just, I should have just, at, at that point, I should give up on trying to make. Yeah, definitely. Well, I didn't definitely. give up on trying to make. That's the right. problem. <laughs> But yeah, then it, it was kind of weird because it seemed like you were pre-moving. I tried, I did. It wouldn't let me. It wouldn't let me Yeah, it was some something with the promotion, yeah. It didn't. I don't know exactly what happened there. Yeah. But but that's okay. Yeah, Still, I should have stopped you, you trying to win. You definitely were playing, just... were playing better than your opponent that game. Just yeah. a little slow. <laughs> a little too slow. <laughs> well, I enjoyed that game, nonetheless. GG. GG. No, Mark Feingold says knight g4 was better with mate threats. Hmm? Probably here he means. Like this. Instead oh, yeah. of knight e4. That is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. You're threatening check. Like let's say he makes a random move. Check and then check and then mate. Yeah, thank you, Mark. And he can't run away. <clears throat> He'd have to like do a weird move like like knight h1 or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mark still has it. Yeah, but this it. is mate, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's impossible, like, to find mate when you have five seconds left. You just have to make random moves. Yeah, definitely. But you were so desperately short of time, might have overstepped anyway. Hey, Tor the cat. Dork the cat. <laughs> QA1 is mate in one. I showed that. Oh, okay. Um, Just a little delay. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I think we're probably going to end the stream because... Um, it's already 8. Yep. 
Um, Spencer's leaving work soon, and I have to play ping pong. That is important, <laughs> yes. <laughs> with my younger son and kind of check in with my older son. And Ben, ben is streaming tonight um, from 9 to 11, I think. Looking so, at me like I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't rate him unless Dang. he'd shown up to um, stream early, which I did not hear him come in. Time to remove the stone of shame. Attach the stone of triumph. <laughs> I finally know that reference. It's a Simpsons. Right? Yes, yeah, ben told, told, Lodge, yeah. yeah. That's I a great haven't one. seen it. I don't watch The Simpsons. But I know the characters. Oh uh, yeah, nine to eleven is correct, Kangaroo. All right, good. And never forget nine eleven. Well, I enjoyed this stream. I hope you guys did. I know um, I did. <laughs> I enjoyed learning. Who are you gonna raid? Stuff. Let me see who's uh, streaming right Take now. Take it easy, Kappa. Um, and Ivy. All the regulars. Yeah, thanks all my folks. Hans. Let's see. Oh, but he's doing Among Us. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not rating somebody in general that's not right. doing chess. Maybe uh, Nepomniachi then. <sighs> you don't like him. You know what? You know why I don't like him. I'm gonna tell you why I don't tell like me. him. Tell me. I'd like to hear this. <laughs> uh, I, it's not that it's not a strong dislike. You have to understand. Oh, I'm gonna rate it's Hafu. All right. <clears throat> it's not a strong dislike, but. Because she's on. Oh, and it, well, actually, she is doing some chess. Um, I'm going to rate it Tafu. But um, the thing is, because she's, she's cute. I hope she wins the Pog Champs thing. Okay, here's what Nepo said. I did not appreciate this at all. Um, we are going to do more King's Indian defense, Warnaki. Um, yes, on Friday. Friday. But anyway, um, Nepo. I, maybe I'm sure what he said is true, but it's just why do people have to be so rude? He said somebody asked him who to compare. Um, why am I blanking out on his name? What is a 16 year old Iranian kid? Uh, I I know Ali Reza. Yeah, Ali Reza and Hans. <laughs> Obviously, Ali Reza is much better, and yeah. Neiman would never try to pass himself off as being better. He knows no. his place in the food chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nepo said, oh, it's like comparing a shark and a clownfish. <laughs> <laughs> that, which, that just makes me like him more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing, okay, but, um, you know, that's just rude. You know, Nepo, you know, with your pretentious man bun. There's no, oh, I didn't know about the man bun. Nepo's man bun? I didn't know he he bunned it up. Oh, he's always had the man bun. Mm. You know, it's like don't shit on the lowers. <laughs> I mean, what's the point of you? <laughs> All right, it is fu <laughs> it is funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but you know, I do not. You know, Ben and I don't agree with this, but I do not put civility and kindness behind. You know, put the jokes ahead of that, and. Um, so it made me, <laughs> it made me like him a little bit less. Okay, I did laugh at his dumb joke. <laughs> I am attacking his man bun and his manhood, you know, for being rude to the seventeen-year-old. But um, <laughs> I can't take this guy seriously. He's got no hair. Anyway, you know, I'm a, a Hans Niemann fan, so I did me not too. like that. Yeah, he's a nice boy. I didn't appreciate that. And then somebody asked for Hans. <laughs> reaction on stream and um Hans proving yet again what I'm saying is he's growing up I right, thank you we're here for Hans Hans just said come on chat I know all about that and there's no beef we're not turning you know you I don't even remember not making words. Drama we're not nothing, turning this right. into drama mm -hmm. I don't care about it and he was like very he took the high road so you know Big, big middle finger to you, <laughs> <laughs> Nepo, but, um, you know, so we're not raiding you. He doesn't need my little raid anyway, but still. <laughs> so looking, so I'm not raiding Hans either. He's not doing chess and never know what Botez is doing. She actually says Fortnite. But you already said you were going to raid that other lady. Um, I already forgot. Yeah, we're going to raid Hafu. She, she doesn't know who I am, obviously. 
what she's doing chess, I'm pretty sure, if her category's correct. Okay, we're going to rate it's Hafu. Everybody check her out. She's really cute. She's in the Pog Champs. She does some other games. From what I understand, she's been taking this chess stuff very seriously and practicing a lot. So we have to support um, new people that, you know, like chess. And so... We're going to raid a tough food. Bye, everyone. See you guys soon. Thank you so much. Oh, you can I just can go ahead it. and end it. <laughs>